The appointed hour is six o'clock having been reached. I call this meeting of the Amherst Zoning Board of Appeals to order. My name is Steve Judge. As ZBA chair, I want to welcome everyone to this meeting. Pursuant to chapter 20 of the acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access this meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access these proceedings in real time via technological means. Additionally, this meeting is recorded and may be viewed on, via the Town of Amherst YouTube channel and the ZBA webpage. In accordance with the provisions of Massachusetts General Laws Chapter 40A and Article 10, Special Permit Granting Authority of the Amherst Zoning Bylaw, this public meeting has been duly advertised and notice thereof has been posted and mailed to parties at interest. We will begin with the roll call of the members of the ZBA. Steve Judge, I'm here. Ms. Parks? Here. Mr. Maxfield? Here. Mr. Meadows? Mr. Gilbert? Here. Mr. Cochran? Here. Ms. Winter? Here. In panel for tonight's meeting um, are Ms. Judge, Ms. Parks, Mr. Maxfield, Mr. Gilbert, and Mr. Cochran. Also in attendance is Maureen Pollock, planner, and Dave Washevitz, senior building inspector. The Zoning Board of Appeals is a quasi-judicial body that operates under the authority of Chapter 40A of the General Laws of the Commonwealth for the purpose of promoting the health, safety, and convenience and general welfare of the inhabitants of the town of Amherst. One of the most important elements of the Amherst Zoning Bylaw is section 10.38. Specific findings from this section must be made for all our decisions. All hearings and meetings are open to the public and are recorded by town staff. The procedure is as follows. The petitioner presents the application to the board during the hearing, after which the board will ask questions for clarification or for additional information. After the board has completed its questions, the board will seek public input. The public speaks with the permission of the chair. If the member of the public wishes to speak, they should so indicate by using the raised hand function on their screen. The chair with the assistance of the staff will call upon people wishing to speak. When you are recognized, provide your name and address to the board for the record. All questions and comments must be addressed to the board. The board will normally hold public hearings where information about the project and, the, and input from the public is gathered, followed by public meetings for each. The public meeting portion is when the board deliberates and is generally not an opportunity for public comment. If the board feels it has enough information and time, it will decide upon the applications tonight. Each petition will be heard by the board that is heard by the board is distinct and evaluated on its own merits and the board is not ruled by precedent. Statutorily for a special permit, the board has 60 days from the close of the hearing to follow a decision. For a variance, the board has 100 days from the date of filing to file its decision. No decision is final until the written decision is signed by the sitting board members and is filed in the town clerk's office. Once the decision is filed with the town clerk, there is a 20 day appeal period for an agreed party to contest the decision with the relevant judicial body and superior court. After the appeal period, the permit must be recorded at the Registry of Deeds to take effect. Tonight's agenda, a public meeting, ZBA FY 2022-07, Pleasant Trees Incorporated, FCOT, the formerly known as Herbology Group, Inc., for review and approval of a proposed contingency plan pursuant to condition 38 of the previously approved special permit ZBA FY 2019-13 and ZBA FY 2019-14, located, located at 422 Amity Street, map 13B, parcel 18, limited business, BL, and research and development R&D overlay district. Public hearing on ZBA FY 2022-03, Redwood Construction, Inc requests a special permit to transfer the permit holder of the previously approved special permits ZBA FY 2018-21 FY 
and ZBA FY 2020-16 to Redwood Construction Inc. under section 10.34 of the zoning bylaw located at South Point Apartments, 266 East Hadley Road, map 16D, parcel 13, neighborhood residential RN zoning district. ZBA 2022-04, Gregory Biggs and Howard R. Paul request a special permit to modify the previously approved special permit, ZBA FY 2002-21, in order to remove condition seven, which states, this permit shall expire upon change of ownership or management. Located at 19 Phillips Street, map 11A, parcel 34, general residence, RG zoning district. ZBA FY 2022-05, Lane V. Floyd requests a special permit to modify the previously approved special permit ZBA FY 2011-04 in order to remove condition 13, which states this permit shall expire upon change of ownership located at 204 and 206 Belchertown Road, map 15C, parcel 32, neighborhood residence, RN zoning district. And ZBA FY 2022-06, Lane V. Floyd requests a special permit to modify the previously approved special permit ZBA FY 2001, 20, excuse me, FY 2011-03 in order to remove condition 12, which states this permit shall expire upon change of ownership located at 192-194 Belchertown Road Map 15C, parcel 64, neighborhood residence, RN zoning district. Then there's a general public comment period uh, at, at which, uh, during which people can comment on anything that's not before the board tonight and other business that is not anticipated within 24 hours. First on the agenda is a public meeting, ZBA 2022-07, Pleasant Trees, AKA, or not but formally known as not doing business as formally known as, as Herbology Group Inc. for the review and approval of the proposed contingency plan pursuant to condition 38 of the previously approved special permit ZBA FY 2019-13 and ZBA FY 2019-14 located at 422 Amity Street, map, port, map 13B, parcel 18, limited business BL and research development R&D overlay district. Um, first off, do we have any um, disclosures from members of the board? If not, uh, the following submissions have been received by the uh, town staff. 422 Amity Contingency Plan, a previously approved special permit decision 2019-13 and 2019-14. We've received comments from the fire department dated September 29th and comments from the police department dated September 29th. I have no, I don't think we've had any public comments. Have we Maureen on this? No. No. Um, we also have the, um, that's it, that, that's it. That's all we have is we have also the uh, application and the contingency plan has two um, um, plans on it, an exterior and circulation plan and an interior circulation plan. Um, who's wishing to present for the applicant? Yep. Uh, could you give your name and address for the record, please? Yeah, my name is Zachary Wilson um, and the address is 145 Front Street in Worcester. Um, and then the address right. we're talking about is obviously the 422 Amity Street. Yep. Go ahead and proceed, Mr. Wilson. Yeah. Um, so I'll share my screen here first with you guys. Just so we can pop up the plan. All right. Can everybody see that plan? Yes. Perfect. So I know you guys got that. Um, I kind of want to just go right down to the um, actual exterior first. Um, so basically this is gonna run a similar site plan to what we have up and running in East Hampton. Um, but basically we have adequate space inside the dispensary 
where we can kind of be able to separate people on the adult use side and the recreational or and the medical side. Um, but realistically, if we do end up having a line, which it's not expected because we have enough space inside, we're going to have it go right here um, on that front sidewalk and then kind of trailing over here. I don't expect it being any longer. Um, we do have in the plan, if it ends up being over 10 people, we'll actually have people kind of wait in their cars and then we have a digital queuing system and it kind of talks through some of that on how we can kind of manage that. And then once they are inside, um, this over a little bit. Um, so once they're inside, they're going to come right in here, check into this lobby. Um, so basically from right there, that's where we're checking to make sure that they're actually allowed in the dispensary. But again, once they are over 21 or they do have a medical card, that's when we allow them to enter into the sales area. So the sales area can fit a good amount of people. Um, and again, based on the current foot traffic in the area, I don't see it being that big of an issue to have to have exterior line queuing. Um, but again, you can see how this is the wide open sales floor for the recreational customers. And then we have the medical portion of the dispensary right there that will be accessed only by uh, medical patients as well. Um, so basically jumping into kind of the plan a little bit more. So staffing, also the fact that we do have the East Hampton location, we can you know be able to kind of float staff from one location to the other. Um, but basically having somebody deployed to manage the traffic outside, we're gonna do a similar thing that we did with East Hampton too, is having people on site right as we open to help kind of manage that flow of traffic throughout the day um, and really make sure that everybody's entering and exiting the building as is designed in the plan. Um, but we also do have on-call people that we can call in if, you know, it's a busier time and we go through some of that stuff to, you know, be able to justify having some more folks in to be able to help manage that line. We absolutely will. Um, as far as the parking goes, um, we'll basically, you know, once the parking lot has reached that three quarter capacity, that's when we're gonna start kind of employing multiple people outside to help raise that flow. Um, but again, I don't see that with the amount of parking that we have being a constant issue. Um, but again, we do have the on-call staff, part-time staff to be able to dial it up and bring it down depending on how that goes. Um, as far as the pedestrian traffic goes, again, lined out you know, where that will all be happening. Ideally, nothing in the parking lot. We'll have those 10 people lined up on the side. And if we reach that 10, you know, we move them back into their cars and then call them in one by one. Um, we'll also been in talk with uh, the police department about, you know, having people on site. Again, they don't think it's going to be that big of a deal. We have one right next to us that really doesn't have a ton of traffic. Um, but we've been in very close talks with them to make sure, you know, the flow is happening correctly and people are coming in and out of the parking lot safely as well. Um, and the fail safe plan, the final thing, um, I think that is the, you know, it's just way too busy. We can't fit anybody in there. We basically can switch to a pre-order only model um, that then allows us to then text people, hey, you know, we got your order, we're making it, getting it ready to go, but don't come on site. There's nowhere for you to park yet, you know, and then we'll be able to manage you and give you a text right when you come in then. Again, I don't think that's necessarily gonna happen right away, um, just based on some of the other surrounding places, but we do have that in place right now. Um, but yeah, I think that's, you know, again, there's the kind of interior flow, the exterior, um, and open to answer any questions that you guys may have. Great, thank you very much, Mr. Wilson. I have, I have a couple of questions to start off. Uh, and to start off with first of a comment, uh, for the board members who weren't on the board when we approved this special permit, one of the concerns at the time, we, were, we approved several uh, recreational marijuana uh, dispensaries, was that there was gonna be a, just a swarm of people, that traffic was gonna disturb the neighborhood, that it was gonna be very busy. And as a result, in every single case of uh, every single marijuana facility that we approved, we had them uh, work a contingency plan, especially for those first few days, and to work with the police to do that. In this case, they weren't going to open right away. They were going to give us a contingency plan at a later point in time before they opened up, and that's why this is before us now. Um, it wasn't something that was a change. This is just 
it didn't have to be done till then. And that's the reason it's here today before us. Um, I have a couple of questions, Mr. Wilson, for you. The first is just, and these are for my information, just for my information. Um, you, on staffing part A, you say that um, the following tasks, we will perform the following tasks upon the, um, upon the following conditions or as needed as determined by pleasantries management or upon the advice or direction of the building commissioner, fire department, blah, 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 blah. I suspect you have advice or direction because you're hoping that just, because you're anticipating that you're going to uh, respond positively to the suggestions of the police chief or the fire chief rather than having him give you an order. Is that why those both are there? Is that the Absolutely. reason? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah, we're keeping it, okay. that's kind of our, like the way that we deal with it is we're gonna leave it up to that local law enforcement and whatever, you know, you guys know it a lot better than us. So it's really just putting it into their hands and doing whatever, you know, whatever they deem fit. So it's important to, important to note, you're gonna be reaching out to them. And if they say, we think you ought to be doing this, you're, you're um, vouching to us that you're gonna respond positively with their suggestions. Absolutely, yeah, we've already started okay. the communications and Good. That's, we don't that's have different. to want, we don't wanna to have to rely upon um, being directed or being forced to do something on your part by the police. That's great. Absolutely. The second thing, um, Pleasant Trees employees will be deployed to manage traffic exiting. I su suspect that's foot traffic. <laughs> Correct. Under under one A, would you, uh, can I suggest that you just mention a foot traffic so it's not confusing? Just make yep. that amendment and we can, <laughs> we can submit that. Um, and the last thing is on your fail safe plan. Again, this is just, I'm just, either way is fine with me, but it should just be clear. The fail safe plan says that if you get too full, you'll, you're going to shut down um, normal operations and go to order operations for the rest of the day. And then the next sentence says that if it clears up in um, for more than an hour, you're going to go back to normal business, normal operations, or you'll do it the next day. So it kind of those seem to um, conflict. So just have I just would encourage you pick one or the other, whichever one you want to do. But um, do you want to suspend op normal operations for the day, or do you want to make a have to make a judgment for that at one hour at some other point in time you can start normal operations? It just seems to be a conflict. Yeah, and I, I definitely agree with you there. I think, again, what we mentioned before is back in 2018 when this was all there, like a, right. a really bad an issue where we have to do that. And I think that's why adding in there, hey, you know, if it's crazy at this one point in time, we're at capacity, we can't fit anybody there, maybe we'll run through it. And then two, three hours, it slows down. You know, we don't want to force somebody to do just the pre-orders. We want to give it, make it as acceptable, as accessible as possible. So then I would, if that's your desire, and I have no problem with that, it seems to me you should be able to manage your business that way, especially working with police. I would say that you should just be clear that you, that if the area is clear for more than one hour or whatever period of time, you can start, you could revert to normal operating it rather than saying the remainder of the prior sentence says that you're going to um, require pre-orders uh, for the remainder of the business day. So you just have to choose, I would choose one or the other and, and submit that amended version back to us. And which one would you want to choose? Being able to kind of adjust it and doing it. All right. So it's full day. Okay, then. Great. So Maureen, we'll expect from them a, an amended um, contingency plan with those two changes that I thought of, mm -hmm. or that I mentioned and they agreed to. And they'll submit that before the certificacy of occupancy. Um, and I don't think we need a uh, condition on this. That's just uh, they agreed to do that. And lastly, okay. what is the occupancy limit, Mr. Wilson, in the building? Um, I remember we. This is something that we <laughs> we walked. We spent a lot of time working on. When we were, we even took little uh, people bubbles, space bubbles, and put them out on uh, you know, how how far everybody was from each other. This is, that was in very COVID worried times. Mr. Wickersham, identify yourself and um, answer, you can answer that question. Yes, Brian Wickersham, uh, twenty. 5,000 North River Road, Harrison Township, Michigan. Uh, the building occupancy for customer facing, which would be the retail floor, is 53 occupants. Uh, so it's, it, it's quite a large dispensary compared to most. Okay. All right, that's the limit of my questions. Do any members of the board have questions?
Mr. Maxfield. My just just a comment here where uh, you know, I definitely I, we've we've made him do it. It's it's done. I mean, we might see it on the first day, but I think now that we we've really had that experience of seeing some uh, some marijuana shops open up in town. I know um, RC Retail's now in there. I think we're we've definitely gotten to a point uh, in in recreational marijuana where I think there's going to be less of a craze, but. Uh, so yeah, I, I think this all this all looks good. Better to have it than not, especially at this point where it's all done. So yeah, I, I certainly support it as it, it stands with the um, those changes that you uh, you suggested, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Any other comments from members of the board? All right, um, if there are no other comments. I would entertain a motion to approve the contingency plan submitted pursuant. Um, pursuant to section 38, uh, to motion to approve the contingency plan submitted pursuant to condition 38 of special permit ZBA FY 2019-13 and ZBA 2019-14. Do I have a motion? So moved. Mr. Maxfield moves. Do I have a second? Second. second. Ms. Park seconds. Is there any discussion on the motion to approve the contingency plan? If not, um, this requires a majority vote of the, of the committee. This is a roll of the, of the board. This is a roll call vote. The chair votes aye. Ms. Parks? Aye. Mr. Maxfield? Aye. Mr. Gilbert? Aye. Mr. Cochran? Aye. Motion carries, it's unanimous. Congratulations, gentlemen. Uh, get that revised, those two little changes up to the uh, Maureen and the, the building commissioner as soon as possible, um, and then you can proceed. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Thank you. You bet. Okay. All right. The next order of business is Redwood is a public hearing on ZBA 2022-03. Redwood Construction Inc. requests a special permit to transfer the permit holder of the previously approved special permit ZBA FY 2018-21 and ZBA 2020-16 to Redwood Construction under section 10.34 of the zoning bylaw located at South Point Apartments 266 East Hadley, map 16D, parcel 13, neighborhood residential RN zoning districts. Are there any disclosures? Um, I wish to say something here just before we start these next uh, all which deal with the same um, uh, basic issue, which is the removal of the um, um, change in ownership and removal of the waiver of the um, uh, the, extingu the extinguishment of the of the special permit upon change of ownership. One of the things that I was the one who suggested to Maureen that we did not need to have um, site visits this time. And um, because I was familiar with the first two things and I just thought it was gonna be pretty simple. And I think that that was a mistake, guys. I, I did that and it was my suggestion and that's on me. I think we should have had site visits because it gives us a better feel for the properties, for what is there and the neighborhoods and, and gives you a better idea of what you're voting on. Um, I'm, for some of these, I think it's more important than others, but I think that is something that in the future um, I will, uh, I think we should have site visits from almost any case um, because I think it's important for how you you uh, how you evaluate these things. Um, and if anybody tonight, if people tonight feel that they needed to go there and they can't make a decision because of the site, they did not have a site visit, do not hesitate to speak up and let us know, let your fellow board members know that that's a concern of yours and we will take that into account. But I want to tell you that in the future, I think site visits are important. And uh, that wasn't the staff that did this, even though they sent out the, the uh, email. That was my mistake, it's on me. So um, we can proceed and please let me know if that's a concern of yours on any of these, the following uh, applications. So um, are there any disclosures other than that on any disclosures on the Redwood construction matter? I don't have a disclosure, but I have a point of order maybe. Um, yes, Ms. Parks. Uh, Craig Meadows is listed um, as the one of the sitting members for the next 
couple of matters, but I think Eric Cochran should be in there. You're right. And I think I mentioned it at the start of the- of Oh, okay, the, I'm sorry. That the impaneled members, I think okay. I mentioned it, but let me just run through it again, just in case I did forget. The impaneled members tonight are myself, Ms. Parks, Mr. Maxfield, Mr. Gilbert, and Mr. Cochran. But thanks for the check, Ms. Parks, that's, that's helpful. I wanna make sure we notice that. Um, so our following submissions have been received by town staff on this matter. Applicant has submitted a ZBA um, 2022-03 special permit application, the management plan, additional information required for apartments, an approved special permit decision from 2018, 2020 approved special permit decision, the ZBA approved plan set for the expansion of January 26, 2018, and a sample lease agreement. The town's staff has submitted a project application report dated October 6th, comments from the fire department dated September 28th, 2021, with attached smoke detector agreement prepared by Trinity Property Consultants dated April 8th, 2021. The applicant's waiver request from plan requirements for a site plan, a building plan, lighting plan, and a sign plan. There's a list of complaints that have been received about this property over the last, um, goes back how far, I guess to 2014. Those are the submissions that we have received on this. And uh, Maureen, there's been no public comments on this at all? Correct. Great. Um, who's here for the applicant? Carlos Nieto, uh, principal from the Berkshire Design Group for Allen Place, Northampton. Okay, Carl. And, and and there is also the uh, owner's representative, Tyler White, um, for uh, Redwood Construction. Um, and but I will I will uh, start the presentation, and, and if you have any questions, they will be here to to support us. Okay. Okay. Well, you may proceed. Yeah. Uh, first of all, good evening. Um, and just to start off, I wanted to make a quick clarification. Um, we, we're not, I, I, I don't know the other projects that are going after us. I, I saw that there might be um, also uh, transfers of permits or that sort of thing. Um, but in our case, there's, there's no amendment to this permit. Right. Uh, ours was, there's okay. a condition that if, if it was um, sold to another person that we needed to come back to a hearing. And also there is a, a section on the zoning bylaw that requires us if there's a um, somebody else buys a property that has a, uh, a, a project that was previously approved and that person wants to go ahead and build that, they need to do a official transfer, which is what we're doing tonight. Mm -hmm. um, and it just, just a point of clarification, just to make sure that we, we, we were all on the same page. So um, as uh, Chair, Chairperson um, explained, um, the applicant, uh, Redwood Construction, is seeking a transfer of a previously approved special permit um, and for the 266 East Hadley Road, uh, which was formerly known as South Point Apartments, um, it's been changed since there's been change of ownership to renew Amherst. Um, but for sake of argument here, because the previous permit was to South Point Apartments, I will, I will keep with that name just to not make things more confusing. Um, the original permit was uh, approved uh, in 2018 and uh, Several years later, the uh, former owner um, and original applicant came uh, uh, back to the Zoning Board of Appeals for an extension, which was approved in 2020. Um, so that's why there is two permits there. And the uh, very quick summary, this is a 47 unit apartment building uh, as an addition to the South Point Apartments. Um, and the applicant, um, which is Redwood Apartment, uh, Redwood Construction, uh, is the new owner. They've been on their ownership. Uh, they've owned the the, the project since uh, for the last two years, and they're they want to uh, move forward and 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 build this uh, 47 unit apartment building that was previously approved. Um, the intention is to um, transfer the permit um, and then uh, go into building construction, which was. Um, as soon as possible. And the idea is that there is, will be a tentative date of um, starting in December 2021 uh, with this project um, if, uh, if approved. 
And one of the things that I wanted to uh, straight out, the, uh, this seems to be a fairly straightforward uh, permit um, process. What we're looking for is uh, straight transfers from the original permit to now to, to the new owner. And the owner is not um, proposing any changes to the original plans. Um, so he wants to go ahead with the original plans as they were submitted and approved. And there's no uh, additional amendments or changes at this point for any um, of the other documentations that were required um, uh, as part of the uh, conditions. And, and, we, and the owner will follow all the conditions that were previously uh, imposed on the project. Um, as part of this uh, process, uh, one of the conditions on the uh, previous permit required a um, to come back and, and provide a uh, updated management plan, uh, which the the uh, Redwood Construction has uh, supplied and 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 giving you a copy of, and it pretty much follows everything that was discussed in the previous management plan with when we we previously approved this project. So. What I'm trying to get to is that what we're trying to do is a clean transfer of the permit, no changes, and the client really wants to follow every single condition that the board previously had imposed on the project. Um, as part of the um, application um, process, we did uh, get some comments and it was mentioned about the comment on the fire department um, and the applicant has uh, answered the question from the fire department in regards to the um, uh, smoke detector agreement. Um, the question was a simple one where the uh, old agreement was built upon the old um, uh, uh, smoke detector systems that were uh, installed. Um, and the fire department pointed out that there had been some um, new uh, detectors that were installed and that the agreement had to change its language. And the owner has done that. They've changed the language um, and it's in regards to the battery operated or, or non-battery or, or um, combo of hardwire and battery operated uh, type of detectors. So the applicant, what they've done is in their smoke detector agreement, they've added the other types of, of, of detectors that could be um, included. The project right now, 90% of the smoke detectors in the project have been upgraded to... Um, uh, wired and battery uh, backed up uh, smoke detectors. Um, there are some apartments that have not been renovated and as they keep renovating, they will upgrade, which is you know, part of Massachusetts code um, to change those. Um, and that is the reason why they've um, added this language. And I believe that's the reason why the fire department asked for, for us to add some language um, to be more broad in the definitions of our smoke detectors. Um, I think, again, I, I believe it's a straightforward process. We're trying to get a transfer of a permit that was previously approved at the, and, um, and I will open up to any questions that the, the board has at this point. And I was gonna ask Maureen, um, I, I have another computer, which is the one I could share documents. I think Carlos, I, I raised my hand on the other computer. I just wanna make sure that, um, that if there's any questions, I can I can share that screen. Sure, absolutely. Um, however, you're the one that you raised your hand with um, yeah. is an attendee, and I've tried to make Carlos 2.0 a, a panelist, so you might need to press a button. Okay, Julian has bounced. I saw it right now. Perfect. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Good. Well, thank you. Well, we lost. We lost. Oh, there he is. Okay, got yeah. it. we've got him. All right. Um, so, help me with this. When did Redwood buy the the property? Two two years ago. Yeah. So you Tyler, we answer. Tyler, we answer that. He's the owner representative. Thank so you, Tyler. What's your address again? My address is twenty eighty two Michelson Drive, Irvine, California nine two six one two. Thank you. Um, and if if I may may um, correct. Carlos, slightly, we actually purchased the property um, this year in March. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Yep. Good. All right. So, yeah, I, I just want to make because there, the old special permit went to Yonex. It was a different company. Okay. Yeah. Um, 
So you said that you're going to follow all the, uh, the management plans, including staffing, everything else. Um, so there's a couple of things that are in the, the conditions from the last um, special permit that I don't see in the management plan. Okay. Um, one is the um, having a um, weekend security guard. Um, it's, it's condition Steve, 25. Uh, would you mind, Steve, sorry to interrupt you. Could you reference yep. the number um, in which uh, special permit you're referencing? Is it uh, ZBA? ZBA 2018-21. Mm -hmm. And it's condition 25. And so that one requires, says you shall add a weekend security guard when the new building receives 80% occupancy and review and security shall occur at the public meeting within 90 days. You talk about security within the addendum for the, the management plan, but you don't mention that specifically and it's not mentioned in, in, the other, in any other management plan. So um, is that something you're gonna add to the management plan? And you intend of course to follow through, but where that should be in the management plan. So, uh, Tyler, if you wanted to answer that uh, specifically, I can I can add, but I, I I think you're you're more. Sure, sure. Uh, yes, we can we can add that to the management plan. I'm happy to do that. I think the intention was that because it was already covered in the conditions of approval is why it, it was left out initially. But happy to add that if if that's uh, what's requested. You've done you've done such a complete job of of listing staffing in the management plan. In other areas, this was notable by its absence, and I didn't want that to be an inference that it wasn't going to be done. So that would be good if you'd add that to the management plan. That's great. Okay. Um, and I didn't, I didn't find it in the lease, but uh, condition 24 of 2018-21 limits the stay of guests to five days and a maximum of 10 guests per unit. Our thinking at the time was that you have families there and some, they'll come for, you know, for a week and it's not just one person coming over to visit, you'll have more than, so that's a large number, but I don't see, is that in the, is that in the lease? Those it is in, in the lease. It is in the lease. I will find, actually, the lease goes okay. even, it's a little more strict that actually says three days. Okay. Um, and then it limits it to six days within a month. So it's less than 10 and I will pull that. That's in the hour. lease. It's in the lease. Yeah. All right. Um, and uh, I saw that language. Um, uh, yeah. In any, uh, man, this is page in the total PDF. It was page 47. Um, okay. Apartment lease contract. It's the, in the first page and it says, um, on line on line item two, no one else may occupy the apartment. Person not listed above must not was not stay in the apartment. Persons not listed above, which would be the occupants, um, yep. must not stay in the apartment for more than three consecutive days without prior written consent, and no more than twice that many days in any one month. If the previous okay. spaces, yeah, so. So good. There is language there. Covered. And if you change that lease, uh, you have to come back to us. You understand yes. that if you change that lease, the lease, you have to change it in compliance with the conditions. But you are, yes. you've met the conditions, you've exceeded the conditions, so that's not a problem. All right, that's good. Um, and I'll just, one final thing, um, actually two final things. First, when this, Mr. White, you, you, we weren't there when this was discussed. There was a lot of discussion about and representations and good um, offers made by the previous owner on the playground. Um, we wanted to make sure that the playground had safe material on the ground for falling for children to take care of. There were, and we didn't go into details about that, but there was a lot of discussion about the new playground material. There was also a lot of discussion about providing some kind of shade someplace, especially around the playgrounds. And there was various ideas of, of screens and Kind of sales. We didn't go into to detail about that in the conditions, but that was something that the board had discussed at the time. And we, I think our decision was not based on that, but it was informed by the willingness of management to look at this and to, to uh, an, our belief that they were going to be responsible and uh, provide playgrounds and safe areas and some shade for playgrounds as well. So I think that's something that we anticipated with not requiring you to do. 
So I just want to make sure that you as a representative of the new owner is familiar with that. And um, I hope you will follow through in that as well. Yep, our intention to follow through with that I request. Thank you. Um, lastly, is this, so this management plan that you're submitting is the last, is the final management plan that you will have. Is the, do you anticipate any kind of changes in the future? Um, besides the request to add the, the condition 25 with the night security right. guard that uh, we don't expect any additional changes. Okay. I'm, I'm going to add, uh, Tyler, just to be very uh, transparent and clear. There's been a change on since we had sent this on who plows the uh, site. There's been a change from one company, Mohawk, to a different company, which Tyler, I sorry, I, I, I forget the name of the new company that's doing it now, if you wanted to mention it. But that would be the only other change that we could see that could happen because it's just a change of company who's going to be that's, doing the plowing. That's a ministerial change and you just submit that up to the department. That's not something Perfect. that we have to, we don't have to approve that. You can hire your, whoever you want to plow it. That's, that's not what we have to have, but you just have to have somebody to plow it. Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, parking and the last thing is, you, is the condition is you have to have a parking um, sticker submitted to the department before final occupancy. You're aware of that. Mm -hmm. All right. I don't have any other questions. Do any, does anybody else on the board have questions regarding this? And Maureen, have I covered everything that we needed to cover on this? And do we need yes, to make, I, go ahead. Uh, yeah, I, I believe you've covered everything and um, perhaps, um, well, it, it, maybe other members have questions or comments, but um, perhaps um, you should, uh, you, uh, I'm sure you're about to review the suggested conditions and yep. um, if there's any new uh, suggested, oh, oh, there aren't any suggested, uh, suggested no, conditions. Yeah. That's, yep, okay. Not for this one. Yep. No, and I was just looking to see, we have, we have to make a finding under 10.34 under this, but, um, but first I wanna make sure I can give board members opportunity to comment if they so choose. Mr. Maxfield. Yeah, my question here is for uh, Mr. White. So you folks um, purchased this uh, earlier this year, you said, am I correct? And then- um, Yes, that's correct, March, March of this year. Got it. What was um, what was just kind of the the motivation of of purchasing this? And um, you guys are based out of California, but you guys do stuff uh, across the country with with uh, property building and property management. Correct. Yeah, we're a, a national multifamily developer um, and owner of uh, of property all across the United States. And so um, this this project fit our our business plan to 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 purchase the property and um, to um, hold on to it. And, and also, I mean, it wasn't a, <clears throat> we, did, we weren't aware of the, the situation of this, of the previous owner already having obtained the special permit. Um, but when we found out about that, we, it was our intention to continue to, to on with that uh, plan to, to construct the new building. Um, but that was the motivation. So yeah, this is what we do all across the country. Okay, thank you. And uh, I guess one more question, follow up with that. Just uh, how long have you guys guys been in this business now? I think, if I'm not mistaken, it's it's been it started in the '90s, uh, so it's you know 25 plus years uh, in this business. Yeah, thank you. The questions, Mr. Gilbert. Thanks, Steve. Um, yeah, quick question here. I know that based on some of these extensions that you know have been received, you guys have until December 31st of 2023 um, for a substantial completion of construction. Uh, you know, it's my understanding that you referenced the intention to break ground in December of this year, which would give you you know approximately two years to complete construction without having to return, of course, to the CBA and request an extension. What is your estimated timeline of construction i mean if you, if you want i can i can answer that i believe if i mean if if we can get this permit approved and then we move to the construction documents part where we're going to be submitting uh 
building permit uh, documents. And if that happens before December, we can break ground in December. Um, obviously there will be just ground prep during that period because we can't really build the building at that point. Um, and then mm -hmm. construction will start, will we'll continue then during spring. And my understanding, this is a, you know, kind of a year long, year long construction type project. Um, if there's no, you know, major issues. Um, so we're, I, I would say that we will be looking at um, summer of 20, you know, spring of 2023 um or end of 2022 um to be closing out with the project for, okay so for close out in fact not, not yeah well when i say close out to finish construction and having having you know having a building at that point yeah yeah of course yeah just trying to um sort of understand the time frame and um and yep. what your expectations are to make sure that we're um anticipating you know that yep. that being completed within the two years Mainly at one year construction period. And if we can start in December, it means that we'll be, you know, done, hoping to be done by December of next year, um, if not extending to spring of the, the year after. Great. Thank you. Other questions? From the board? If not, um, are there members of the public that wish to speak? Do we have anybody, Maureen? No, I, I see none. Yeah, I see none. Okay. Is there anything else that um, Mr. Nito or Mr. White you wish to say before we uh, give it a last chance for the board to make any comments? No, I, I think we're all well set. Done. Yeah. All right. Any further comments from the board before we move to the public meeting portion. All right. Um, if there are no questions from board members, I'd like to move to the public meeting without closing the public hearing, but keeping the public hearing open just in case we need additional information or public comment. I'd entertain a motion to open the public meeting on this matter while keeping the public hearing open. Do I have a motion? Mr. Maxfield moves it. Do we have a second? Second. Ms. Park seconds. This is the roll call vote. There's a discussion on it. Anybody have discussion? It's a roll call vote. The chair votes aye. Ms. Parks? Aye. Mr. Maxfield? Aye. Mr. Gilbert? Aye. And Mr. Cochran? Mr. Cochran? He's muted. I, I see aye. an aye. Okay, I, I see an aye. I didn't hear an aye. Okay, <laughs> sorry about that. I got it. That's good. That's, you got it. All right. Um, this is the time we can make specific findings under 10.34, which is fairly easy to do, but it's also to review any possible conditions if that is something that the board wishes to discuss. Um, I think that in this case, conditions probably should be limited to just the, re if there are any conditions just to be discussed that are just conditions on the transfer, um, not on other aspects because there's no pr proposed difference and no proposed changes. Um, but I would leave that open to members of the board before we move on. If not, we need to make a um, finding that, that we need to act under 10.34. We don't have to make a finding under the other parts of 10.38. 10.34 um, allows for the transfer as long as we approve the transfer of ownership um, by this body. Um, so unless there's any further discussion um, regarding this, I sense that we have consensus on doing this. Um, I would entertain a motion to approve the transfer request to the new permit holder, Redwood Construction Inc. Do I have a motion? So moved. Maxfield. Do I have a second? Second. Ms. Ms. Parks, is there any discussion about the motion to approve the transfer? This is one that I think, my discussion, this is one that I think is pretty straightforward and um, there's no reason for to not approve this and to get the new owners who probably can get this thing going and built um, after several attempts, which is really what we want to do. It adds, it'll add, uh, you know, 90 more units of housing in Amherst and we should get that done. Um, so any other comments? If not, um, oh. this oh, is a roll. Okay. Yes. I was going to say, yeah, I, uh, I think I agree with you, Mr. Chair, you know, looking at the initial application, 
had I served on the board at that time, you know, I might have might have a lot more to say, but it looks like we we've, we've done it. And yeah, I, I think I agree at this point. Um, for for something like a transfer, it should be relatively straightforward. And I, I agree with the uh, your sentiment on getting some more uh, more housing here in town. Yep. All right. Oh, just to, um, just yes. to clarify. I believe you said 90 dwelling units to be added. It's, um, you had indicated it, the, it's 47 new dwelling units. Um, 47, yeah, that's right. And yeah, somebody, yeah. like 90 some beds. Is that, is, it, is that what it is? Yeah. yeah. Yes. I got confused. <laughs> if you can give us 90 units, we'd be really happy about that. But you'd have to be back, <laughs> you'd be back in front of us. I don't think we're gonna do that right now. All right. Um, if there's no further discussion, we're prepared to vote on this. Um, this motion requires uh, the um, four votes. No, it does not. I'm sorry, this vote, majority vote. So the chair votes aye. Ms. Parks? Aye. Mr. Maxfield? Aye. Mr. Gilbert? Aye. Mr. Cochran? Aye. Great. Uh, congratulations, gents. You've got uh, the, the transfer. Be sure to... Um, make those changes we discussed to your management plan, um, incorporate the security guard in the plan and the other things and give some thought to the concerns that we all had when we approved this about the playground, the material that the kids fall on and some shade. Really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you everyone for your time. Uh, let's see. The next order of business is ZBA FY 2022-04. Gregory Briggs and Howard R. Paul request a special permit to modify the previously approved special permit ZBA 2002-21 in order to remove condition seven, which states this purpose shall expire upon change of ownership or management. Located at 19 Phillips Street, map 11A, Parcel 34, General Residence RG Zoning District. Are there any disclosures from members of the board? The following submissions have been received. Um, a memo from attorney Tom Reedy, Thomas Reedy, dated September 2nd, 2021. A waiver request from attorney Reedy dated September 2nd, 2021. ZBA 2022 dash 04 special permit application, prospective purchasers management plan, additional information required for apartments, prospective purchasers lease agreement, and the ZBA's approved special permit decision. 2020, that's a 20, 2002 special um, approved special permit decision. Town staff submissions are a project application report dated October 6th, a 2021 residential property permit, Landscape plan with lighting, trash, storage, and parking dated 9 15 2003. ZBA approved 10 9 2003, pursuant to condition six under ZBA, a special permit of 2002 21, a zoning map. The applicant's waiver request from plan requirements for a building plan, a lighting plan, a site plan, a sign plan, a site plan, another lighting plan, and a landscaping plan. Um, who's here to appear for the applicant? I am Mr. Chair. Applicant. Mr. Reedy, would you give your name and uh, yeah. then your address, please? I'd, I'd be happy to do it. Uh, good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, uh, Mr. Roskevich, Ms. Pollock. I'm Tom Reedy, an attorney with Bacon Wilson here in Amherst, here on behalf of the owners of 19 Phillips Street, um, requesting a I hope pretty simple modification of uh, an existing special permit for a converted dwelling to eliminate um, the condition that it requires the permit to expire upon change of ownership or management. Um, the owners are here on offline, but they're they're listening. I, I told them that I think I can handle this, but obviously if the board has, has questions for them, I'm, I'm happy to bring them on. Um, I guess, Pretty simply, this 19 Phillips Street received a special permit for a converted dwelling back in 2002. And um, 
this was at a time and, and I'm I'm on for the next two hearings as well for the Belchertown Road ones and I'm going to be saying probably something similar to what I'm saying now. Um, these some of these conditions are a little vestigial um, where and I don't know if it I think it was the board's policy at that time and, and I know that at least since I've been practicing here in Amherst over the past 10 years subsequent boards you know I think beginning um, I think with, when Mr. Parent was the chair specifically, the board has transitioned to allowing applicants to modify their special permit to eliminate that provision where it expires upon change of ownership. And I'll talk about that in a moment and really transition to requiring a subsequent purchaser or prospective purchaser to come in at a public meeting and to talk about a complaint response plan, lease and, and management plan, just to make sure that it's the use of the use that that's going to be continued to be managed. You know, one of the issues with having that provision, the expiration upon change of ownership provision is financing because effectively, if there was a foreclosure, what would happen is it would be a change of ownership. Um, and at that time, the, the mortgage holder who would have stepped into the shoes of the previous owner would really only have a single family. So as far as lenders look at this, they say, well, I can't even finance it as a two family as a, as a, you know, anything besides a single family, because if I were to step in, then um, the two family status would go away and I would only have a single family. So that's just like a practical real world concern. And that was something that we had talked to, you know, previous boards about. And I think that was one of the reasons, one of the driving reasons, uh, and there, there might've been others, but one of the driving reasons to switch to that public meeting, et cetera, piece. So, this is one where it, it's in the RG district. Um, it's, it's in close proximity to UMass. I think management is obviously important. Potential purchaser is Killerine Properties. Um, he owns, I think, 15 other properties in town, pretty well maintained, managed. He has St. Hilaire from Valley Property Management, who I'd, I would suspect that you're familiar with. Alan does a really nice job of managing. He's a professional manager. He manages the properties pretty well. And so, you know, simply put, what, what we would be looking to do is to eliminate that condition. And then I've, I've taken a look at all the conditions that Ms. Pollock had presented in her project application report, and, and they're all fine to be added to um, the, the special permit. I'm happy to answer questions, but I think short and sweet is always the best. So what's the what's the status of the tr transaction, Mr. Reedy? Right? Yeah. Now? So it's is not. It, it won't. Or what is it? No, it, it won't close. So one of the conditions um, of the closing is to effectuate this transfer, and then, frankly, to have the decision filed with the town clerk, and then wait out the twenty day appeal period. So whatever, if there is an affirmative vote, whatever Miss Paula can do to get it to the to the town clerk as as quickly as possible, that would be helpful. Um, but yeah, so it hasn't happened yet. It's. So I've got uh, Randy Paul and Greg Briggs on with me, um, but it will be transferred to Killerine Properties. And we're targeting, we were targeting November 1st, but obviously by the time we have this hearing, the decision's filed, et cetera. So I think we're looking at a December 1st. Did I say November 1st? Uh, so December 1st date is what we're targeting. And who's the current property manager for the current owners? Yeah, I think I I think they manage the properties themselves. themselves. So I think we're, tr yeah, we're transitioning to a, with all due respect to them. Manager. Yeah, to a professional manager. I mean, they're both local guys, contractors, builders. They, they do a really good job um, with the property, but then it's being transitioned to uh, Valley Property Management. So one of the things that is confusing when I read through this is the limits on the number of occupants per unit. Back in the 2002 and all the way through it till now, there was three in one, a limit of three in one unit and a limit of four in the other. The reason I guess was because one is a two bedroom unit and one is a three bedroom unit. So it's four and three under all the old, but I notice in uh, one place it says no more than four unrelated. So one of the potential conditions says no more than four unrelated individuals shall occupy each unit. I don't think we wanna change what has been used been there for a while, but it's four and three currently, I think. And that also goes to the guest policy, um, which I think was was eight at one point. It's 
it's just confusing. So can you run through number one, how many people live in those each of those units? And number two, what the guest policy is in those um, and going forward from the new, I guess it would be for the new owner. Yeah, and so, which puts me in an interesting position because I'm not working with the new owner, but according to their right. application, so, and we're not, I mean, we're not trying to change anything. So if the existing yep. permits uh, restrict occupancy, as you have said, to you know, three and four, three. Yep. Yep. Uh, we're, I mean, we're not looking to change it. We're, all we're trying to do is have that expiration upon change of ownership condition removed. And then Ms. Pollock's yep. Yep. thought, as, as we'll talk about in the subsequent ones, you know, having a lease and a complaint response plan and a management plan of this prospective purchaser would be a good thing because it would, to a certain extent, um, take away that next step, you know, of having them come at a public meeting to, to present what, what they've got. So I can only rely on what was presented to, to you all. And so I guess what I would say is, if you say, let's keep it as it is, then we're keeping it as it is. Right. Okay. The, the um, occupancy limit, keeping Correct. that as it is. Correct. All right. And that is, so that's the, that would be the new management plan coming in. You're not representing the new, the, own, the new owners, the Correct. prospective owners, you're representing the existing owners. Correct. How do we, how do we make sure, and I'm going to ask Dave and Maureen, how do we make sure that the management plan from the new owners comports with this? The restrictions would still be there on the conditions so that they wouldn't have a choice on that. If that's, the conditions are four and three, that's what they are. They have to live with that. But um, other things such as parking and everything else that, that are currently there, how do we make sure that the new management plan um, for the new owners comports with what is currently being done? Maureen, I don't think we can hear you. You're, you're muted. Thank Dave, you. you're muted too. Um, so yes, so um, since uh, the tonight's request is to uh, remove the condition, this permit expires upon change of ownership or management. Um, it, it is keeping in line um, if the board chooses to make any conditions, added conditions that you know the new owner come back um upon uh, you know upon upon change of ownership the you know they should come back to the zba at a public meeting to review and approve a updated management plan and lease and complaint response plan and um and to uh, submit a parking management plan um that that would uh that would be acceptable um because it is related to the future um ownership of this property um which is uh, related to tonight's request um, and additionally, um, you know, the board uh, may choose to make uh, findings under 10.38 um, that um, speak to, you know, uh, um, speak to why uh, a condition like that should be included. Um, so those are just a couple of things to think of. So it seems to me there are two choices. We can hope to convince the new owners that uh, there's certain policies that we believe ought to be, uh, or conditions that policies that we believe they ought to pursue should be in their management plan, or we can make them as part of the conditions at this point when we're changing them. And th those are some of the things that you have identified as possible conditions of approval. So that's really our two options, right? Sure. Um, you yep. know, another option, and I'm not necessarily suggesting this, is is that you know at a public meeting, um, the board doesn't really have the option of adding new conditions. So if the new management plan, lease, and complaint response plan, and the parking mm -hmm. management plan is is something of um, you know not of your liking, or perhaps it sort of spirals into other questions, um, the board doesn't really, um, can't really add additional conditions. So, um, you know, if the board wants to review those sorts of things at a public hearing, you know, there is this sort of option that, you know, the board may want to consider um, not um, approving this request uh, and um, that a new owner uh, would need to provide a, uh, submit a new um, application for the, uh, for the, 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 the use. Can I make a maybe a, a four suggestion? Why not just the condition that the new owner, so either come back at a public meeting or just present the management plan to the planning, the building department consistent with the conditions of the previously issued special permits. I mean, if we're saying this is how it's been, you're saying these are the, the conditions, 
to me, it's already documented. So it's just a matter of having the, the new management plan actually match what has existed or has been required on the site, which to me seems like less subjective, more objective. Well, I, I have, a, ca I have a counter <laughs> suggestion <laughs> is that the new owner come back at a public hearing. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. so just, I mean, res yeah. respectfully, um, I mean, we've, we've got a management plan here on for this property. It's been managed. It, it has been managed in accordance with the conditions. We're not looking to change really any of the conditions associated with the permit, except for that one. We're, we're saying, sure, four and three occupants, that's fine. To keep it open to a public hearing, I mean, frankly, pushes the closing off by, you know, who knows how long. Um, and transactionally somewhat disrupts where we're going with this. And I would respectfully suggest unnecessarily so. I think there are other ways to skin this cat besides continuing the public hearing or requiring new owners to come in at a public hearing. And I think it's through either method of requiring a public meeting, which again, you know, if you just tonight say, okay, we will uh, modify the special permit by eliminating this condition, but then impose, you know, some of these conditions here, most specifically on change of ownership, the new property owner shall be required to return to the ZBA at a public meeting for review and approval of the management plan and complete response plan, which shall be um, in fulfillment of the existing conditions of the special permits. You know, something like that, and you have them come back and then you run through it and say, because ultimately the conditions are gonna control because if the conditions of the special permit aren't being adhered to, Mr. Waskevich, unfortunately, is going to have to issue some cease and desist or a notice, and that's what's going to start the process. So I'm always of the yes, the management plan is something, but ultimately it's the conditions of the permit that are going to control. So I'm just I'm trying to find a balance of you know moving, continuing to move this along, being kind of commonsensical about it at the same time. And I think the other unspoken concern that I have is I went past the property and, and I'm looking forward to new management of that property and improving the way it's currently managed. And I, and so I do want to, I do hope that the new, I want to hold the new owners to that. And I want to find a way to do that. For example, I went there today and currently this, the limit is four cars and there was, there was six cars on that property. Um, this afternoon, I went there. It was there's a pong table, beer pong table out in front of the property. There is kind of a ratty old. It, it just looks it looks bad, and it doesn't look like it's being managed well for that neighborhood. And it's right against the it's right against the university. That is a problem block. And normally, I think these are things that we should um, we should give that deference to the new owners and just have them come in. But this is a block that has a lot of problems. Um, and I, one of the things that these conditions do and the management plan does is help the neighborhood, um, improve the neighborhood because it solves some of the problems, the nuisances, the complaints that you get. And it also creates a better um, way to, better, better housing for students. I mean, trying to keep this at four and three as opposed to people uh, doubling up and tripling up and living in the basement, which, you know, I don't know, but in this case, the basement is probably dangerous. Um, you know, that's, those are things I want to try to avoid and the good of, the, I think that's towards the public good. And so uh, let's, let's look at these conditions. I think we should impose them. I think that uh, they make sense. Um, I think that we should have the new, the new owner should come back with the management plan and submit it to us. Um, in time for um, after we um, permit the transfer, I think the new owner should do that. But you know, at that point, we lose our leverage. You know, to try to help to make sure that these conditions are imposed, and so we have a choice of either composing conditions now, or um, waiting on the hoping that the management plan is satisfactory. Otherwise, we have to deny the new management plan, and that puts you as an in as much risk on the financing as getting um, as um, um, having the management plan delayed. Either way, you know, that, that is not a good result for, your, for the clients with the new purchasers. So, but the latter, if we approve this without requiring the management plan to come back and without putting in conditions, 
we've lost our ability to make the kind of changes and conditions that would be helpful to the, for the neighborhood, I think, and for better management of that property. Mr. Waskevitz has raised his hand. Yes. Yeah, I just want to piggyback a little bit with Steve. Um, so when this uh, special permit first came out was in 2002, and there was a, a way of thinking back then that people had, and they you know, did the best they could with formulating the conditions based on what they were experiencing at the time. So if we remove the ability to be able to add conditions at some point, we're going to be stuck with whatever we decide tonight. And it, it will be based on that. And we can do our best to try to anticipate the future. But without that ability to go back and make changes, it really limits um, what we can do about problems that could occur that we never anticipated. So I would ask Mr. Reedy if he can think of a, a way that could alleviate this concern that may be something you've seen used in other towns or other ways to go about it. I mean, I, th I think the, the lowest hanging fruit in, in something that I'd want to think about is a review period. I mean, that's that's one of the most simple mm -hmm. ways to do it, right? Is just to say, come back in, a, you know, either upon the issuance of a cease and desist and you're, you're coming back for violation and you're going to be in front of us or we'll review it in a year, you know, to make sure that you are adhering. I don't think that's an offensive condition. Frankly, I would think if you know, the new owner is doing what they say they're going to be doing, which is obviously, I think, going to be in the town's best interest to, to, to do that and to keep them honest, then, you know, just have them come back in a year or earlier if there are, you know, um, you know, I want to be sensitive to not just putting this open-ended, like, ability to call them mm -hmm. back at any point, because that's just as risky. Granted, it's, it's in their control, but Sometimes, as I'm sure the board knows, and as Mr. Waskevich knows, you, you can't necessarily control the neighborhood. And all it takes is somebody making a complaint call, and then, you know, they're really affecting someone's livelihood of, of you know, rental income just for their gain. So I think if you do maybe just a year, um, a year review, then that, that probably at least gives you another bite at the apple, so to speak. And just a little, just expand a little bit off of that. Um, so what if we find that this new owner is not um, doing what he should be doing? What other than fining or something like that is there would be no ability to put additional conditions on that, correct? No, I, there, well, it, it depends what path we go down. And so if you say, okay, we have certain conditions associated with this special permit and those conditions are violated, then you're gonna issue a cease and desist and they're gonna do one of two things. They're either gonna comply with it or they're not and they may appeal it if they've got 30 days. So then they come to the Zoning Board of Appeals and then it's you know your office versus them. And then they can decide, you know, frankly, they're going to comply because it's a lot cheaper to just comply than to try to push back. And I know that the building department isn't unreasonable with their compliance requests. So I think, and that's why I go back to the conditions of the permit are really paramount because that's what's going to dictate behavior. Um, and then if they're not behaving according to those conditions, that's where you have the opportunity and that's where you really gain the leverage. And so to me, it's always about condition drafting. And that's why I said, you know, when I look at Maureen's conditions here, I think it makes a ton of sense to just to include those conditions. Now, if, if I'm hearing from the board that, and what I heard from Mr. Judge, a couple of things, but one of them was, it's not necessarily that the, the management plan and the lease reflect accurately what the existing conditions are through these special permits. And I think that's easily rectified through a condition. If you're worried about losing your, your leverage or your ability to pull them back in, to a certain extent, that's always a risk for you as, as a board. And I think it's imposing appropriate conditions so that there is an enforcement authority, the building department, who's able to go in and to enforce those conditions. And if those conditions aren't enforced, then, then you can you, you bring them back through the cease and desist. But I would say as a, as a practitioner, and I say this to Ms. Pollock as much as I can, is that developers always like, and this isn't necessarily development, but developers like predictability. You, know, you, you need to say, here, here are the rules of the game. And then they can make business decisions of whether or not they're able to comply. And then that really colors what their next steps will be. To always have it hanging out there that, that they could be coming back just on a whim 
is going to make transacting yeah. very difficult just generally in the in the town. So I just want to be don't... sensitive to saying like if you can like if you're not comfortable with the conditions that you have now and you say listen come back at our next meeting which hopefully is 2 weeks from now and and then we're not worried about necessarily like a one year period I think that would be better frankly than you uh, putting on that one year second bite at the apple provision I'll call it um, or Ideally, I'd like you to feel comfortable and just issue it the way it is, but it, it just doesn't it sound doesn't sound like it. So I think that's what I would say is if if you are that hesitant because of its location and you want us to come back in two weeks and I'll bring, you know, Alan St. Hilaire and you can talk to him and he can hear, you know, from you and the public hearing still open and then you can impose the conditions to me. It's like. I don't like it, but that's the, that's the answer, right? I mean, that, that's what makes the most sense for the well, situation. There's two answers. There's that. And there's the year review. That's they're both. Yep. And the but the the next the two week thing, the, we only are talking to the current owners, but we are talking conditions. The review we are the new owners are and we can review the management plan from the new owners if we have a year review. So there's a plus and minus to both approaches. Um, but that's I appreciate the the thought you gave it to that, Mr. Reedy. Mr. Maxfield. Yeah, I'm 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 very much inclined to agree with I think a lot of what uh, Mr. Reedy has said here. In that, I think once the CBA is issuing a special permit, you were supposed to do our our, our due diligence and drafting uh, strong conditions. But I feel like after we've we've issued that, the conditions are in place. You know, we have uh, Mr. Waskevitz's uh, people in town hall who can then look at these. Um, the transfer of ownership, having something in there that would still go to review, but as opposed to it coming before a, a public meeting where let's say this property is sold again in 10 years from now, and now we've got a, a whole new board. They've never seen this. They've never looked at this. And this is really just a transfer of ownership. Is this really a time that any, that anyone, any time that a property with a special permit is sold that this has to come before the board. And I, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe this really is the, the philosophy of the board as a, as a way of doing things. Um, but it, it seems like this idea that having it come back to us oh, it gives us this, this control to prevent blighted properties. Well, this, we're, we're, we're trying to insinuate here now that this, um, this property is being poorly managed and there is a special permit already issued on it. And we're saying that we're finding cars, uh, too many cars out out in the the parking lot, and we suspect that there might be too many people in there. And this is a we don't. I didn't. I don't. I didn't apply that. And, I, and I, yeah, yeah. I, I should say. I guess. I, I guess even in general, uh, maybe not this yeah. property, but a property may have something like that. And just because there is a special permit uh, attached, um, well, then it's already built into conditions. They can't do this. We technically already have the enforcement. We shouldn't even. They don't need to come before us for another. It's it's they're already in violation. Um, so I, I think that once we've issued a special permit to, to say that the transfer of ownership, we need a management plan, we need this and that, and that can go for town staff for review. And they are approving it based on the conditions that we, we had set out at the, um, at the initial, um, initial time of issuing the permit. So that's that's my my uh, point of view on this one. I think I think Mr. Reedy's right about that one. I, I don't like the idea. It's when you know just as our, our, our previous case came forth, there's been no construction done. This is a transfer of ownership. I can see that one, but even something like that seems strange in that it's creating an opening for us as the board to then say, no, we're gonna vote this down. So now somebody made a, a major purchase that is completely worthless, which if it were the case that we felt the person buying it were somebody who is not someone that should be uh, doing business in the town of Amherst, I, I, I like that a little bit. No construction has been done, but we're talking about something that's been built, it's been approved, it's been approved to operate a way that they're asking to continue to have it operate that way. Uh, I, I think I think it's probably better for um, for the town, the CBA, to to not have it come back to us when there's a transfer of ownership, but to still have the town review these things and then they can make that determination. Um, you know, yes or no, we want to have the condition that if uh, Mr. Wachevitz says, no, these don't meet the conditions that somebody could then appeal to come before the ZBA and then we could review it. Um, I wouldn't mind something like that. Um, 
but I, I, I think I trust Dom staff to, to be able to review. I think Mr. Waskevich will probably uh, outlive some of us here on the ZBA and no, no decision we've made and be able to uh, make decisions based on that. And then, you know, the day he retires, the next person coming in there, I think we'll have a, you know, a lot of longevity and no, yeah, I remember when this came before us five or six years ago, I remember what we talked about, I have it all here. I think that's, that's uh, in a lot of ways going to be more effective than that coming before the ZBA. So that's, that's what I think I have to agree pretty much with, with Mr. Reedy's point of view on this one. Other comments? I think one of the things that we want to make sure is that we, that over time, and I think some of the conditions that the staff pointed out, we want to adjust, realize that things have changed in the 22 years since this was first done. We weren't talking about dark sky compliant. We are talking about it now. You know, there are things that, are, that we have learned as a community, as a town, as a board, as a building commissioner, of things that, things that we want to have as um, best practices for rental properties. And so some of those do need to be done and they have to be updated. So we can't just lock everything in forever. Um, and I do think that the board's role in some of this is to make that pub is to make, to make that policy. So, so like the dark stack compliant in our rules and regs that we, the new language we always use for that. And, and, um, and, and we're updating the, we're updating our policy when we allow transfer without expiration of the special permit. So we do have to adjust at times uh, when, as times change. I think but those, I, uh, if, if I could, I, I think those conditions, I mean, those are totally acceptable. I, I, know, and then I, I know you do. And so and, I, I, and there was one again. that says, you know, the approved management plan and complaint, just to think this through, the approved management plan and complaint, so the approved management plan and complaint response plan shall be followed by the property owner. So that's a condition. And then the new owner is going to come Reed, in front Mr. of Reed, you and say, Mr. here's... Mr. Reedy, I, I let you talk a long time, and I'm, I'm going to let you talk a long time, but I was, I was stalking. Okay, so just okay. let me... Let me finish. I kind of Sorry. lost my train of that's okay, but um, I kind of lost my train of thought. Um, so what I, I think one of the things we need to do is to look at the conditions that staff has suggested, number one, and then see if we're comfortable with that. Um, if you're comfortable making a decision to, to extend this, if you think we need to be talking to, that we need some um, a conversation with the new owners and a commitment from the new owners before the board as we do on a lot of things, just like we did with these two other things earlier today uh, on their management plan and to approve it to make sure that we, that we do approve the management plan. Um, then we have them come back with their management plan to the board to look at. Um, I don't, in, a management plan in and of itself, I think is an important thing. It's not something that is um, a minor thing that should be delegated, ministerial thing that should be delegated to staff on all the time. I think that's the management plan is more more important and it's something the board could deal with. If it's the, the staff should be dealing with whether the lights are dark sky compliant or not, factual questions, but not not always judgmental questions as big as the management plan, I think, Mr. Maxfield. So I, I get your point, I get what you're trying to do, minimize, and I agree with minimizing the uh, the burden on landlords and developers, but management plans, I think, are something that this board probably should be looking at and as opposed to the more ministerial things that I think the staff can be looking about. So Mr. Reedy, um, you did have something to say and I do wanna let you say it. Um, I just wanted no, to- No, I'm first. sorry for, for interrupting you. It's a terrible habit of mine. Um, so really, I'm, I'm sorry. Um, so I, I was just gonna go through the, the, the next steps because there's a proposed condition that says the approved management plan and complaint response plan shall be followed by the property owner. And so to me, that is the condition where once you have this subsequent owner come in, present their management plan to you, you can say we accept it or reject it. Um, and then once that's either, once it's ultimately accepted, because if it's rejected, then they're in violation of their permit because then they're complying with the existing management plan. That gives you, or it gives the inspection services, the enforcement opportunity that, that they need. And so, you know, and I don't know if, if you and Mr. Maxfield are saying two different things. I, I don't think there's a problem with us or, or any potential uh, prospective potential purchaser coming back in front of the board at a, as a, at a public meeting to say, here I am, here's my management plan. What have been the problems associated with this property? Does this management plan address them? And then 
for you to accept it. And if you say, well, if you want us to accept this new management plan, then you have got to do X, Y, and Z in it. And then once they accept X, Y, and Z, then you've got a condition where if they're in violation of that, which has been before you, then it goes to inspection services. So that, I mean, and again, if this takes me just having, you know, Alan St. Hilaire here in, in two weeks before you close the public hearing, just so you're comfortable, that's fine. I mean, I'm not trying to make you make a decision this evening that you're not comfortable with. If you just want to think about it a little bit more, have them, you know, have him come in, keep the public hearing open. Let's make sure that all the conditions are what you want it to be. And then, then close the public hearing considering that at some point in the future, this will likely be sold again. So you're also looking a, to make sure that the management plan you get is how it should be managed. So that the condition, which I just read is the condition that carries forward. So that when a new owner comes in, you're going to have that ability to say, no, 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 this is how it has to be managed. And if you don't manage it this way, you're in violation of your special permit. I mean, I think that's like, that's the leverage. That's the hook because it's not just, you know, part of what we do is as practitioners is like, we don't just look at immediate, like we have to think out to the next few. So, I mean, if you want to continue this and I don't know when the next meeting is, but I mean, I just, to me, that would seem like it makes sense right now. Let's see if there's comments from other board members. Um, I've spoken a lot and I want to make sure I give my other board members a chance to speak. Damn. So um, in that, I got two. I got two hands here. I see Maureen and then Mr. Maxwell. Maureen, you go first, and Mr. Maxwell. Yeah. So, if the board is agreeable to continue this public hearing to the next meeting, which uh, would be the twenty eighth, um, perhaps the board could um, go ahead and do a group site visit, looking at the exterior and interior of the, of the home, of um, the building, and. Um, and uh, having Alan St. Hilaire and perhaps the new owner come to the next next meeting to review the, those submitted uh, documents, such as the management plan, the uh, additional information for apartments, the lease, and the complaint response plan. And I, I'd like to add another document um, if the applicant is agreeable to it um, and if the board thinks this is a good idea is to provide a uh, parking management plan yeah. Um, which goes into how many, you know, parking spaces are there um, and um, how is that going to be managed? Is there a parking sticker or signage? Um, what happens if where it's supposed to just be four cars? What happens if there's more cars there? Um, uh, is there a towing policy? Um, it, so in essence, how, how is the property being managed specifically for parking? And I think it gives us a chance, that does give us a chance to look at the property and, to, and also to, I think quite frankly, it gives us, a, gives the, the uh, new owners or maybe you, Mr. Reedy, the opportunity to try to um, uh, put together all the occupancy numbers so they all make sense. Right now there's a, a bunch of different numbers. There's four and three, there's eight, there's 20, there's, it doesn't, they, it seems like they're kind of slapdash. So the number of people that can be there the guests, the policy, the overnight guests, um, all that would be, make sense to have that uh, have that consistent. It seems now to be confusing to me. I went through it and I couldn't figure it out. And I think the only, so if I could to that, I think the only inconsistency, because as I looked at Ms. Pollock's project application report was the condition that suggests no more than four unrelated individuals in each unit. So uh, eliminate that. And then you've got the number of overnight guests that can be there, the total number of people that can be on the property. And then you would revert to no more than four and three respectively in each of the units. So I don't know that there is an, an inconsistency. I think it was just that is. Overnight, you're happy with the overnight visitors at three and four. Okay. That's, that's the guest policy in the lease now. All that's right. what we were providing. And, and that's 20, why I want 20 people so. total. Okay. All right. Any other discussion? Any thoughts, members? Mr. Mr. Maxfield. Yep. Yeah, I guess I just wanted to, to still follow up on what we were talking about here. It sounds like the applicant is um, amenable to this being extended and, and, and coming to um, you know, another meeting, but um, 
again, I still think in just me, this is, is better for an administrative meeting uh, down the line, uh, sure how, how we should handle these sorts of things. But um, I guess my, my, my real uh, concern here with this is, uh, you know, I, I agree with, with uh, your point, Mr. Chair, that this isn't something that is as just sort of as uh, administrative of, is this a light dark sky compliant or not? It is something that might actually require review. Who is this manager? What is their experience? What have they done? What's the, the plan look like? That, that might be something that should come to the board. But, you know, my worry here is that in, in an effort to, um, I would say, you know, to do our due diligence for the town uh, in making this process more cumbersome in doing so, I think it, it puts it puts it out of reach for, I would say, more kind of your your everyday homeowner who might say, you know, I, I would like to purchase a property like this. It has two rentals. Maybe I could move in there, do something like that and, and, and try to get ahead, something like that, where then you see that um, the permit expires on uh, change of ownership or it's going to require coming uh, before this EBA. And when I feel we end up becoming more cumbersome like that, if you're talking about somebody who can can hire Mr. Reedy to, to come represent them from before the board, you're going to have a much better chance than if somebody wants to say purchase that themselves and they don't know how to navigate this bureaucracy, they now need to come before the board. I think we, we've certainly seen it in the past where you have much smaller developers have a much more difficult time dealing with the ZBA than much more well-financed uh, projects coming for the ZBA seem to get through much more easily because they can afford to, to handle the, you know, the bureaucracy that we, we put out there. And I definitely agree that we have a job we have to do to serve the, the town interests, but I, I think we do need to hit a balance of not becoming so cumbersome that the only people who can afford to deal with this really are people with the deep financial resources to, to, uh, to come before and kind of meet all of our conditions. And I just, I, I think this might be an opportunity for us to I think that's a, you know, that same goal. I think that's a good without... point, Mr. Maxfield. I, I do, I think that's a good point, but I think it's a point, a public policy point. I, I don't wanna, I, I agree with you. We don't wanna at, advantage people with means over people who don't have means, but that's, this situation is not what we're facing tonight. I see where you're, the point you're making, but the situation tonight, we're not facing that. We're not facing, facing people who are, who don't have the ability to the financial ability to hire uh, the excellent legal counsel and consultants. So I don't think that's what we're doing tonight. So um, I would like to, what I would like to do is, unless we have another uh, comment as to the merits of the, let's merits of the proposal, I would like to move on the procedure here and see if, because I think I, I sense a consensus, but I haven't heard from Ms. Parks or um, Co Mr. Cochran or Mr. Gilbert, but I think if we can move to a um, here at this, post, uh, suspend this or um, move this to two weeks, leave the public hearing open, have a site visit, um, have a we can have more um, we can have agreed upon set of conditions and a um, condition on the management plan come from the new owner that we could move next week perhaps and get this done. Is what that's what I would like to or not next week in two weeks, excuse me. Um, I'd like to see if that could be done. Can we meet in two weeks, Maureen, on this, if we keep the public hearing open? Sure, if everyone's uh, yeah. available and, and the applicant is amenable. Yeah, well, that's fine. Yeah. Mr. Wesgevitz has raised his hand. Oh, I didn't see it. Go ahead, Mr. Wesgevitz. Yeah, I just wanted to, just a general comment. So if the board is considering removing this condition upon ex ex having it expire, the conditions that we have a chance of adding uh, next in two weeks are very important for the future. So we should take some time and think about it and think about what has been working in town because this will be your last chance to place these conditions on this property. So mm -hmm. uh, it would be good to give it really some- Really think this through. Yep. Yeah, because if you the point is if we, if this expires, Right now, they go back to single family home. I think, if I think I'm right. Um, so the special permit gives them the right to have four, to have two units there. That's what the special permit does. Absent that special permit, this is a single family home. Um, and that's the reason that there are conditions is that this would be, uh, but for the special permit, 
they would not be allowed to have that rental property that's that the, the type of rental property they have now is that right mr shevich okay all right is there any objection to moving this to two weeks and putting on them in, on the agenda then do i hear an objection if not let's do that uh and we have to move a, a motion go ahead oh Maureen. did you want to see if there's any public comment before you yes, um yes make thank your you motion? very much thank you very much I think it's a no, but you never know. <laughs> no, 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 it's a good reminder. All right, thank you. I was moving any, to a conclusion. Nope. Oh, someone has raised their hand, should. actually. Okay. Oh, actually, I think that these are the uh, current owners. Um, so we'll let them speak. They raised their hand. Um, hold on. Hello? Hi. I'm not a current owner. Oh, sorry. I'm I'm, uh, my name is Skyarn Briggs. I live in Cushman. I would just like to point out that this was this way of issuing special permit uh, restrictions was set up in the early 2000s because Amherst was very leery about moving from one family homes to creating housing for more people. And that is no longer the case. So I would point out to the committee that you've got three more cases before you tonight that um, have to do with exactly the same question. And what you're looking at is an outdated policy. That's what you're looking at. And uh, I would encourage you to consider it that way. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Absent any um, objection, the schedule is for two weeks. We'll keep the, the hearing open. All right, Mr. Maxfield. I'm just making the, the motion to do just that. Second. Ms. Parks, discussion. If there's no discussion, we'll move to the vote. I vote aye. Ms. Parks. Aye. Mr. Maxfield. Aye. Mr. Gilbert. Aye. Mr. Cochran. Aye. Okay. All right. The next are two, two Belchertown Road properties. Uh, the first is, let me just get correct, ZBA 2022-05, Lane v. Floyd, request a special permit to modify the previously approved special permit ZBA FY 2011-04 in order to remove condition 13, which states this permit shall expire upon change of ownership located at 2004-2006 Belchertown Road, neighbor 15C, partial 32, neighborhood residents, RN zoning district. Is there any disclosures? If not, um, any... Mr. Reedy, are you representing the applicant here? I, I okay. am. Uh, so for the record, Tom Reedy, attorney with Bacon Wilson out of Amherst here on behalf of Lane Floyd, the property oh, owner. You know, what, you know what I forgot? The submissions. I was trying um, to move through quickly. I'm knowing of everybody's time. I need to do the submissions here sure. for the record. Um, the project application report for this one. Philip Street. This is 204, okay. Um, app, the applicant has submitted a ZBA application, a management plan, an application memo from attorney Reedy dated 2026, August 26th, a waiver request from Mr. Reedy dated 20, August 26th, previously approved ZBA special permit decision, applicant's waiver request for site plan, building plan, lighting plan, landscape sign and management plans, Additional information required for apartments. Zoning map provided by staff, also provided from staff. Residential residential property permit effective until June 30th, 2022, and a project application report dated October 6th. All right, Mr. Reedy, I'm sorry to have interrupted you. <laughs> now you can go. That was hardly an interruption, Mr. Chair. Um, I think I've already stated for the record who I am, and you're probably yep. sick of hearing it by now anyways. Um, <laughs> So, like I said in the preceding hearing, and I'll probably say in the subsequent hearing, 
this is one of those, and this is a little bit different. It's not, it's not right by the university. This is on Belchertown Road. It's zoned um, RN, I believe, resident, uh, neighborhood residents. Uh, Lane Floyd owns this property and the adjacent property. It has one of those, and I would say vestigial conditions um, where it expires upon change of ownership. And so then the request is just to modify for this one, it's, it's remove condition 13. And we are fine with all of the conditions that uh, more, uh, Ms. Pollock had suggested. Um, I, I have not heard back. I don't have a, a management plan. I don't have a lease of any yeah. perspective, anything. So we fully intend to come back you know, with that individual, whoever's, because I think Mr. Floyd wants to ultimately sell these properties, but this is not like Phillips where there's actually a buyer who's ready. But so this is somewhat anticipatory. So there's no there's no transaction anticipated nope. at this point in time. This is just kind of a prophylactic removal of that to increase the ability to sell the property. Yeah, and this was one I know. I think it was 286, 288 Belchertown Road. Um, Paul De Benedetto. We we did this, and he's just a stone's throw from here. We had uh, had because this condition was on that to family permit as well, and so we had that one removed. I don't remember when, but. This is a little bit different part of town, um, too. A uh, couple of questions. Since there's no transaction, um, is this ur this is obviously this is not urgent. But um, I guess I had a couple of questions. Number one, um, how many people live in twenty oh four and two oh four and two oh six? Do you know? I I don't. I would have to assume it's in accordance with. Yeah whatever the, yeah. the permit approved. But I, I can't find that number, so I'm not sure what that is. And then if it's, I um, mean, if it's- and it, has, it has 11 cars, I'm just trying to figure out. Yeah. See, I don't think that I saw any limitation. Yeah. And so, you know, and let's see. And you absent a limitation, then I just, I default to you know, no more than four unrelated individuals is, is so, where my mind goes. You know, we really did, we, we wanted a, a, a man, you know, we typically ask for a management plan and, and look at the lease before we approve these things. And we don't have either one of those. So all, all we're I, looking to do is eliminate the condition that says this expires upon change of ownership and really right. substitute that yeah. with not only your conditions, which you know, your, your dark sky compliant lighting, yep. um, you know, rental registration, those like getting the nomenclature and then the new policies updated, but it's really substituting expires upon change of ownership for come back at a public meeting with the management plan and lease at the time uh, of that transfer. And I mean, that's, that's really the swap that we're looking to do is, is one for the other. So I wouldn't anticipate you know, cause there's, I, I would assume an existing management plan. And I mean, there's existing operations on the site. And so then whoever comes back, you know, and then to go back to my last comment, if a condition exists that says you have to abide by the approved management plan uh, and complete response plan, then that's, that's the hooks of the zoning board at that time with that new owner to say, your management plan needs to say X, Y, and Z. Um, Okay, so but right now, the, the existing condition that, that is proposed by the staff is the, it says, you know, I, it says the approved management plan and complaint response plan, which is referring to the one that is currently in place, shall be followed by the property owner and any changes that shall return to the Board of Appeals. So I guess it's hard for us to judge because we don't have the management plan or the complaint response form before us, and we don't have the lease before us. And you're saying that the new owner would have to come back and provide that. And then we could approve it or not approve it. Um, but if he just says, well, I'm just gonna do the same thing that they're doing. We don't know what they're, what the previous, what the current owner is doing. But right? if, if I could, so then what would happen is they would, I mean, you would get the management plan that you thought was right. And so if that new owner came in and, and said, I'm gonna do what they're doing and say, well, tell us what works. And then you're gonna be able to say, okay, we want the trash in this certain area. We want to make sure that, you know, the snow plowing occurs this frequently. Um, okay, so let me ask a question. Maureen, do we have a management plan for this in the files? I don't see, I didn't see it. And maybe I missed it. Um, 
I don't believe so. So this was. I don't think so. Uh, I if you give give me a few moments, I can verify. We have a guest. No, we don't. Um, anyway, I'm just trying I mean, to. It says, out the best. So it says the so, property. So one of the conditions of the 2011 special permit condition number six says property and use shall be managed in accordance with the management plan received on August 26, 2010 and stamped approved exactly. on September 2nd, 2010. We have to look for that. So I want to give other board members an opportunity to talk um, and then we can continue the conversation with them. But there may be questions that board members have for the applicant. Mr. Maxfield. I was going to say where there's not a uh, prospective buyer here, I uh, mean, it's right. This sounds kind of similar to kind of what, what we were doing last time. Yeah. If, you know, there's no, there's no pressure, I think that to get this done quickly, because no one's trying to buy it. Are we all kind of thinking maybe this one as well between now we've all kind of shared our thoughts about how to handle something like this. We all kind of want to just think from now till the, the meeting we handle these and of what we all think about our uh, procedure going forward is for, for this, at least in these cases. Or do we really want to kind of maybe get, get more into the, into this one specifically? I mean, yeah, I, from my perspective, I mean, I'm, if you want to kick me over two more weeks, I'm here anyways. And if you want to think about more of a, higher level of, of approach. I think it's somewhat apples and oranges. I mean, this one, I'm not gonna go through the management, there's a management plan, take a look at it. You'll be able to see what it requires. But I think I, respectfully, you know, the board, the, the board saying, I don't think- How is this working we, mechanically? Yeah, yep, I obviously, but we don't have that before us, do we, Maureen? We don't have the management plan and we don't have that. Um, so so uh, Mr. Reedy did submit a management plan um, what wasn't submitted was the uh, part of the management plan is uh, additional information required for uh, for apartment units. Um, but these aren't apartment and, units, though. Yeah, uh, well, uh, rentals, um, and uh, a standard lease and a complaint response plan. And if I may, yeah. I would add a parking management plan. So I, I think, I mean, those we should have those things if we're going to rely upon that being the governing documents. Can we get those in the next two weeks from the applicant to be put on the next? Uh, yes, yeah. I, I mean, I think right. I, I'm looking forward to our conversation in a, in a couple of weeks um, as well, I think, but yes, yeah, yeah. But, I can get but I, if we're going to base our decision on the management plan, the parking plan, other things, which I think are, is a reasonable thing to do, one of the things we could, we have to decide whether we want to eliminate the, the condition. That, that's what you're asking us to do. Yes. One of the things, it's totally reasonable for us to say to eliminate that condition. Um, we'd want to make sure we know what the management plan is as a board. We want to know what the parking plan is and we want to know what the complaint response plan is. And that's reasonable on, of the board to want those things. And so we should have that before us and we can do that in the next, we can get that to us before the next two weeks, I'm sure you could. Yeah, and I think yep. why, why I said what I said is, I, so that now we know going forward, okay, upon these requests, here's what's going to be required because you know, we submitted the management plan that was part of the initial special permit from uh, 2011. You know, so we, here we come in, just talking procedure but, and think, okay, we've got everything that you need. And I don't think it's unreasonable to say, okay, right. we need to see these things, but you know, and I'm sure going forward, you'll have a standard procedure to in this Pollock will know to say, okay, here's what the board looks for when you're looking to have this ex ex expiration upon change of ownership removed. So I, I don't see an I issue getting it to you in two weeks. No, I don't think there's an issue. And because and, um, the lease would then be able to answer some of the questions we have on the conditions of her overnight guests and all those kinds of things, I would guess. Yeah. If not, then you'd be prepared. Yeah, yeah, and I'm just number. Yes, and I'm just trying to think about how that. I guess so. Then what you would be looking to do at that point in a couple of weeks is to lock in. Here is what is happening at the property, and then using that as the baseline for subsequent owners when they come before you 
with their management plan. And you even want, might even want to say management plan, property, uh, sorry, parking plan, lease, like make those all explicit in that public meeting uh, when they come before you. I think that is a good suggestion for a process. But anyway, that's what we, sh we should have that. And I would think okay. we'd all feel better about it. No problem. Oh, and um, Mr. Chair, uh, would the board like to do a site visit at this property as well? I will go out there. I think I just think it's good practice. Like we didn't do it this time. I think that's part of the reason we're having trouble making these decisions is we didn't physically look at it. And it just helps you to do that. And that's, again, that's my fault. I shouldn't have said we don't need to do it, but I think that makes a lot of sense, folks. So I will do that, Maureen. I'd like to have a, a site visit and I would encourage everybody to attend. I'm very pro site visit as well. Yep. All right. Um, so I, I would like to move that we. Um, oh, wait, move. Hold, oh, sorry, uh, if I may. Um, uh, yep. Did you want to see if there's any um, public comment? I think we had. Did, did we just have the um, woman from Cat from Cushman? Didn't you just speak on it? That was Philip Street. Uh, that was yeah. Oh, that was Philip Street. I'm sorry. It's, it's all merging into one. Okay. Public comment. Exactly. Um, so if, if if there's someone that has a public comment, please raise your hand. Um, the nice. button to raise your hand. Okay. Uh, yeah. No one. No one's indicating. All right. So I would entertain a motion that we move uh, that we keep the public hearing open on this matter and we move it for consideration on October 28th on the agenda for October 28th. Is there a sec? Is there a motion, Mr. Maxfield? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Ms. Parks. Um, Mr. Gilbert, you've got to be faster in order to get that second up. <laughs> <laughs> um, I vote aye. Ms. Parks? Aye. Mr. Maxfield? Aye. Mr. Cochran? Aye. Mr. Gilbert? Aye. Motion is unanimous, motion cap carries. Um, we're gonna to try to make this next one quick because I think it's the exact same situation as the previous one. Um, the next order of business is EPA FY 2022-06, Lane B. Void, Floyd, request a special permit to modify the previously approved special permit FY 2011-03 in order to remove condition 12, which states this permit shall expire upon change of ownership. Located at 192-194 Belchertown Road, Map 15C, Parcel 64, Neighborhood Residence District, Art and Zoning District. Are there any disclosures? I'm not going to go through all the um, other app the submissions because I think there's no reason to do that. We've opened up the public hearing. We can make those uh, submissions uh, for the record when we recon if we do indeed reconvene. And at this point, I would entertain a motion to continue the public hearing on this matter until October 28th. I moved. Is there a second? Mr. Gilbert, oh, your seconded. chance. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got a second. Is there any discussion? If not, the motion, the, the, a vote occurs on the motion to continue the hearing till the 28th. Chair votes aye. Ms. Parks? Aye. Mr. Maxfield? Aye. Mr. Um, Gilbert. Aye. Mr. Cochran. Aye. All right. It's um, those that that concludes the um, the uh, items on the agenda. We do have two more things to go through. Um, thank you all for this. Thank you, Mr. Reedy. We'll see you in two weeks. Thank you. Um, the next order of business is public comment on anything not before the board tonight. So this is public a chance for the public to speak on any item not before the board tonight. It could be the Red Sox, it could be anything. I'm not, not even Red Sox didn't get people to talk, that's amazing. All right, and the last is other business not anticipated 48 hours before the meeting, we had none. Um, so I would just say that two things, I would just 
encourage two things. Number one, you get a chance. We've got some um, decisions to sign up there. There's one, I know there's one, there's probably another one coming to get a chance to go up there and do that. Um, that starts the process for the applicants to, uh, um, and with that we've approved to start their construction or whatever they're gonna do. And the second is again on the, on the site visits. I look forward to seeing you all on the site visits. Um, and I apologize for that, um, I think, poor decision that I made not to have a site visit on this last one. But uh, we'll go oh, oh, forward with the next one. Yep. yep. Oh, if I can, so just to clarify, especially for the new members. So um, I will um, send out a doodle poll um, with suggested times and dates for the site visits. Um, typically they are, um, I think, I think we've been doing them at five o'clock or, or in the yep. morning. I, I can't, I can't even remember. Um, um, I guess this would be a good opportunity to take a straw poll, um, or we could just wait for the doodle poll. Um, I was going to say if, if folks want to indicate if, if first thing in the morning or at eight o'clock or if five o'clock is better, if, if people want to tell me now, or you can just indicate in the doodle poll actually. Yeah. What do people think about that? Five better? Or well, eight. Yeah, later in the day works better for me. Same. Later in the day, five, 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 five. Later. I mean, I can, yeah, I can swing five if need be. Mm -hmm. Five works for me. There's no early morning risers here. Or, there are, or you're already at work at eight o'clock, probably. It's a problem. <laughs> early can, morning uh, business. <laughs> I can do mornings, but uh, if uh, everybody else can, I can do five. <laughs> five o'clock. Thank you. All right. Okay, folks, um, is there any other comments, questions, any other business before the board tonight? All yeah. right, thank you all. Gonna, oh, I, I was okay. just gonna say, say just a, a little bit of kind of a, an anecdote, but I guess it's con considered CBA uh, matters, so I might as well mention it in a public meeting where it's not gonna be any violation of open meeting law, but I know just, uh, you know, where we were dealing with the new marijuana facility and all of that. You remember that discussion that we had a long time ago about will they be allowed to open at eight or will they be allowed to open up at nine? And, and we had a long back and forth with that. Uh, I, I actually stopped by to check it out. They open at 11 a.m. After all of that, that's the time After they all pick. that that's, <laughs> that was that was cardinal. Mm, yep. Down on uh, South Amherst. Yeah. 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 That was a big yeah. discussion. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if they want to open at nine one day, I guess they can, but there you go. We're opening up at 11. <laughs> All right. And okay, folks. One, motion to adjourn. Yes. Do I have a motion? Is second. there a second? Yeah, yeah. I got a couple of seconds. Um, <laughs> this, motion, <laughs> this motion is not debatable. Chair votes aye. Ms. Parks? Aye. Mr. Maxfield. Aye. Mr. Gilbert. Aye. Mr. Cochran. Aye. Thank you all. Maureen, thank you. Dave, thank you very much. We appreciate your effort and your work. Mm -hmm. Thanks all the members.